Hi, I am Vikas Vajpayee, Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, the LNM IIT, Jaipur. Today, I will be giving you a brief description about a very hot topic which is cloud computing. I will start my uh, discussion with a very benchmark statement on cloud computing given by John Markov who writes in the New York Times blog. He says that moving computing and your data away from the desktop or from your portable PC and simply displaying the results of computing that takes place in a centralized location and is then transmitted via internet to user's screen. So, I will add something to it that not only the data from your desktop or from your portable PCs these days from any of the handheld devices or from uh, let us say the simplest handheld device which is your cell phone. You are moving your data, you are computing your data at some uh, different location uh, where the cloud vendor is providing you the services. Another definition which is given by Carl Havitt which is cited in several research paper on cloud computing says it is a paradigm in which information is permanently stored in the servers on the internet and cached temporarily on clients that includes desktops, entertainment centers, table computers, notebooks, wall computers, handheld devices and so on and so forth. Now, uh, when we talk about cloud, then we have uh, the five essential cloud characteristics which are given by NIST that every cloud should possess. It talks about on-demand self-service that means whenever we need the cloud services, we should get those services. And the second one is broad network access that is through internet because if you want to avail these cloud services, then you need to have a decent internet connection, right? Small, uh, a low bandwidth internet connection, a DSL connection will not uh, let you avail these services. Another thing is resource pooling, that means we talk about location ind independence. Another one is rapid elasticity, that means if you want to crunch more number of data, as you can add to the servers and you will be in a position to crunch your data. Another one is the measured services, which says that based on your usage, you will be uh, charged. Now, next is we will be talking about classification of these cloud variants. One is your service model based, that means what all services these clouds uh, vendors are offering you and another one is deployment model based that says in what way you will be deploying your cloud. Now, uh, firstly we will talk about service model based which says dependence on the cloud services being offered which are IAS that is infrastructure as a service. Another one is PAS that is platform as a service and the last one is software as a service which is SaaS. We will be discussing uh, on these topics in the coming slides. Now, the other classification is your deployment model based that means on what basis your model is deployed whether it is a public or a private or a hybrid or a community. In private you get the facility that the complete uh, cloud services are offered to you only in case of public it is available to the general public connected together and the uh, general public is accessing the cloud resources in a sandboxed environment that is again provided you virtually and this can only be possible by the concept of virtualization. In case of hybrid both public and private are connected together. In case of uh, community the setup is done by a group having some shared specific goals. When we talk about the logical view of cloud computing, in the core you have infrastructure as a service. When, uh, see these days storage as a service also is limelight. That is again a part of infrastructure as a service where we are providing the hardware resources, computing resources and the sto storage part as well. Above which uh, we have a layer of platform as a service on top of it your softwares are running which are the software as a services and these are accessed, these services are accessed using any of these devices which are your tablets, your servers, your desktops or your PCs. Now, some of the uh, vendors who are the giants in case of providing cloud services are when we talk about software as a service then Salesforce is again one of the giant. Google and uh, uh, Salesforce and Microsoft Azure again play a lot uh, important role in case, case of platform as a service. In case of infrastructure as a service, we have Amazon uh, which is providing you the services by the name Amazon Web Services. Now, uh, let us talk about infrastructure as a service where what all things we are providing are the processing to the end user, storage part and networking. On top of it, we have platform as a service uh, which is providing you a platform for developing 
and deploying your applications. The standard definition given by NIST for PS says it is the capability provided to the customer to deploy onto the cloud infrastructure consumer created or acquired applications created using programming languages, supported libraries, services and tools supported by the provider. Consumer does not manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure including the network, servers, operating systems or storage but has control over the deployed applications and possibly the configuration settings for the application hosting environments. Now, uh, when we talk about platform as a service, on top of infrastructure as a service, we are giving you a middleware and a runtime environment where you can go for coding and you can get your application created using the middleware and the runtime environment. The last one is which is on the top of the stack, which is software as a service. So, for software as a service, the definition given by NIST is the capability provided to the consumer is to use the provider's applications running on a cloud infrastructure. The applications are accessible from various client devices through either a thin client interface such as a web browser or a program interface. In this, the consumer does not manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure and he is hardly bothered about the platform even. Let's uh, take some of the examples. If you talk about infrastructure as a service, Amazon provides you the infrastructure in the form of Elastic Compute 2 and Storage 3, which is S3 for storing your data. Another, when we move to uh, the second step of the cloud stack, which is platform as a service. In those services, Google application engine provides you the facility to code using Python, Java, Go. It provides you uh, to go for the storage using uh, uh, big table which is again a property of google on top of it we have software as a service where in day to day life we are directly availing the services but we are actually not aware i'll take some of the examples uh, which we are uh, using which are the form of software as a service your gmail is a software as a service which is providing you the calendar facility let's uh, take an as an example which is nothing but a widget that is added which is nothing but an application that is on top of uh, everything which is a software as a service. You are getting uh, Google Drive where in actual you are getting a good amount of storage space, you are moving your data to the cloud using the Google Drive but for you, you do not have to code anything, you do not have to worry about the infrastructure, underlying infrastructure you have to simply upload your data. So, for you it is nothing but software as a service. Someone else, some other vendor might have coded for software as a service and would have taken care of the storage part as well. Now, the question arises why to go for these cloud facilities? If in case of small and medium enterprises, if someone is planning to set up a business, right? let us take a simple example of e-commerce application, then in the initial stage, to start the business, they would avoid to go for uh, setting up a huge in, uh, infrastructure that means the data centers. Instead, they will prefer to avail some, uh, the, some of the cloud facilities in the form of software as a service directly or even if they want to code, they want to go for some coding, they will be getting the platform as a service or if they want to avail some storage, then the lowest part of the stack which is inf infrastructure as a service, they can avail these services. Again, the question arises if we are moving our data from our PCs to the um, some uh, remote location, then what about the security? So, uh, all these data are kept in the sandboxed environment which are pretty much secure where the single infrastructure is provided to different different users using the technology called as virtualization. That means, the same infrastructure will, will be provided to n number of users and those n number of users will not be uh, aware that they are using a single infrastructure. That only is possible because of virtualization. Some of the basic advantages uh, of these cloud facilities are that if you if you are keeping our data in the local laptop or a desktop, there are high chances that the system may crash and we may lose our data. So, when most of the facilities which are uh, provided free, free of cost like uh, Google Drive gives you the facility to upload the data up to 5 GB. Maybe in the coming days they will expand uh, the storage space up to 10 GB or 15 GB. You will be able to uh, upload all the important data on cloud which is pretty much secure because they the, uh, the Google data centers are specifically running dedicatedly to take care of the data where several replicas are made 
so even if uh, something happens to the data center, another data center may uh, bring back the services to you. Uh, another uh, major Im uh, importance of uh, these availing these uh, cloud services are on demand provisioning. Let us say if in case of your small and medium enterprises, you find suddenly there is a jump in the traffic on your application, then you can request for, uh, to the cloud vendor to get some more computation power and you will be able to uh, deal with the performance issues as well. So, these are some of the advantages by which cloud is very important and is playing a pivotal role especially in, in case of small and medium enterprises as well. Thank you.